It's nice to start the day on, on a better <laughs> note. It feels quite unusual to be here when there's some good news to talk about for once. But I think really what we're seeing here is in the case of the debt ceiling, yes, we have uh, good news so far. I'd phrase this really as two down, one to go. We've passed the, uh, the Rules Committee to get the deal onto the floor of the House. We've now passed the House. As you say, we still have to get past the Senate, but it's looking like there's good momentum there. I think the challenge here for investors is that there was really not very many parts of the market pricing any significant significant risk premium. So unlike the situations that we had in 2011 or 2013, where you'd already seen quite a lot of market disruption when you were heading into the X state, this time round, we've all been talking about it, but equities, bonds, credit haven't really been pricing in a major risk premium. And therefore, this, I think, is a time where instead of seeing a big market relief and a big market rally, investors are going to start to turn instead back to economic fundamentals, where we do still see things weakening. And that keeps you, presumably, that keeps you defensive. To like the, the uptick that we're seeing today and the, that trio of positive factors, you remain defensive. Just underscore why that is. That's right. I mean, in really simple terms, I think there's one big question for everyone to be understanding in the remainder of this year. And that is, do you still need a recession to bring inflation down? Now, when I look at the market rally so far year to date, I think there's this idea that maybe we could get away with a scenario where inflation does tail off without a hit to growth certainly consistent with equity markets rising, with valuations expanding, and no meaningful deterioration in earnings forecasts, that, for me, just doesn't quite square up. That's, that's the Goldilocks forecast. That's the Goldilocks forecast, and that's one that I disagree with, because I still believe when you look at the strength in the labour markets and that feeding through into core services, whether that's the US, the Eurozone, or the UK, we're still going to need a more meaningful hit to growth to rid the economy of this excess inflation, and that's what keeps us a little bit more cautious at this point. I mean, you're right, it just doesn't make sense, right, that, that we can get away with this no landing scenario. But what kind of, I mean, could it be a mild recession? So not, you know, a shallow, or would it be a protracted recession? Yeah, it's a really important question. And we're still more in the mild to moderate camp. I don't think you're going to see earnings declines consistent with a typical recession of, say, minus 20%. I think you're looking more in the minus 5 to minus 10 kind of camp. And so that is going to keep people from getting overly bearish. I don't think this is a time to be running huge underweights to equity. Equities, but within an equity allocation, we think you want to be looking at every possible way, really, to build a bit more resilience into portfolios. And so that, for us, means, first of all, screening for quality above all else. And that's not only a growth view. That can be quality within value sectors as well. Some of the energy majors screening very well at the moment, given the resilient cash balances. And then also, I think, a return to some of the more old-fashioned styles of investing, like income. Dividends, we think, are really well covered at this point. Payout ratios are low, and therefore, if we do see some deterioration in the earnings picture over the next 6 to 12 months, we think, actually, that dividends should hold up pretty well.